Hi friends and welcome back to my channel and if you're new here, hello. My name's George Agambar and I'm a UK music producer. Today's video is all about expanders. Now I've done a couple of videos on compressors and compression so I felt like it was about time I did a video on expanders. Very, very, very simply put, they're pretty much the opposite of compressors. They're used to add liveliness and energy to audio tracks. So if you want to learn a bit more about this, then make sure you stay tuned and hit the subscribe button for new videos every Wednesday. And things will never be the same when I hear your name since you kiss me in the rain. Now, before I get a load of comments saying that an expander isn't simply the opposite of a compressor, let's talk about what they actually do. An expander increases the dynamic range of an audio track. It makes the loud parts louder and the quiet parts quieter. So it makes the peaks and the troughs further apart. Whereas a compressor decreases the dynamic range of a track. So it brings the peaks and the troughs closer together. Now there are two types of expansion, upwards expansion and downwards expansion. And we're going to talk a bit more about that in more detail later on in the video. But first, let's have a look at the general parameters that you'd find on an expander plugin. Looking at the parameters of an expander, you can see that a lot of them are very similar to a compressor, actually pretty much identical. There are parameters that both an expander and a compressor will typically have. And these are the threshold, which determines the level that the audio has to be at for the expander or the compressor to kick in, the attack and release time, which controls how fast the expander or compressor kicks in and drops out once the threshold has been reached. And the knee, which determines how smooth the transition between the unaffected and affected audio is. So how smoothly the effect kicks into the track. The gain on the expander is also much like the makeup gain on the compressor, which allows you to alter the level of the output signal. The thing that is different with an expander is the ratio. It's basically the reverse of compression. So on a compressor, a typical ratio will be 4 to 1, which means that for every 4 decibels the signal reaches above the threshold, the compressor will increase the output by 1 decibel. On an expander, you're more likely to see a ratio of 1 to 4, which means that every signal that is at 1 decibel above the threshold, it will be amplified to 4 decibels above the threshold. On the stock Logic Expander plugin, there are a few more controls and a few more meters that we can see. There are three meters which shows the input signal level, the amount of gain applied to the signal, and the overall output signal level. There is an output clip button which chooses if the signal over 0 dB gets clipped and in what way that happens. Finally, there's a mode section which chooses if peak or RMS is shown on the meters. Now let's talk for a bit about upwards and downwards expansion. Upwards expansion is when all the audio above a certain threshold level will get turned up and the audio below the threshold will remain untouched. So only the very loudest parts of the track are being made louder. And this is used to emphasise the peaks of the audio and adds attack to things like drum tracks or vocals. It can also be really useful when using drum loops to help emphasise the loudest part of that loop. So, for example, let's listen to this Apple Loops drum track and listen and pay attention to the volume of the snare with and without the expansion on. Okay, so you could hear with the expander on, the snare was a lot more prominent in the mix. And that's just one way we can have a little bit of control over the levels within a drum loop that we wouldn't otherwise have. Now let's talk about downwards expansion. A downwards expander is actually very similar to a noise gate. It turns the audio below a threshold level down and the audio above the threshold remains unchanged. And so the quieter parts of the track get made even quieter. And so it's really useful on tracks where you've got some low level noise that you want to get rid of. But hang on a minute, isn't that what we use noise gates for? Why do I need to use a downward expander to do this? What's the difference? 
Well, yes, in theory, both plugins do the same thing. However, noise gates tend to be a lot more extreme. They normally use a lot higher ratio. And um, with a downwards expander, we don't necessarily have to use a hugely high ratio. We can choose and control that. Noise gates also tend to cut the sound below the threshold level off very abruptly, whereas downwards expanders tend to fade out a bit more. Now, I've been having a look at downward expander plugins, and actually they're quite hard to come by. I believe that you can use the Fab Filter Pro G for this, and you can also reconfigure some multipressors too, to do the same thing. However, I haven't looked too much into it yet. So that's a brief overview of what an expander is, what it does, the parameters, and the difference between upwards and downwards expansion. It all sounds a bit scary to start with, but actually, if you break it down, it is very similar to compression. It just works in the opposite way. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you found it useful and interesting. Let me know what you thought in the comments below and if there are any other videos you'd like to see in the future. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and notification bell and I will see you again soon.